Okay, we're gonna start drawing our faces using the grid method in order to have the correct proportion of your faces. Proportion in art means the location and the measurement of one part as it compares to the location and the measurement of the other parts of one whole thing. So what we are going to do is I have given you a gridded out packet of the outline of your face shape hair, but also on the other side, it gets a little bit more complicated and shows where all your facial features are on the grid as well. In order to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the inside of our self-portrait first. So if you have a gridded paper that has a flap, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that flap and then fold it behind so that you just have the flat grid in front of you. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, square by square and see where first the outline of your face shape is on the grid. Because when we draw in art, it's best to start with the biggest, most basic shapes first, details later. So if I'm looking for where my face shape starts, I see that it starts in this second left-hand rectangle, goes down, hits the very sort of top of this bottom rectangle, and then goes um, back up into the square. So with my pencil, I'm just gonna find the, uh, where I see the line for my face shape, and I'm just going to draw with very light lines where I see it hitting on the grid. So if I notice that it's going below that line, I'm going to take my pencil and draw it a little bit below that line. If I see it goes up and hits the grid line around here, I can make a mark where I see it hitting on that grid line and direct my pencil in that direction. In fact, if you already wanna go ahead and make little markers of where the lines are on the grid, you can do that first and then just use your pencil to connect those dashes afterward. Notice I'm not pressing hard with my pencil, I'm doing feather light lines so that if I want to adjust anything, if I see that something's a little off, I can erase it and readjust without it making a deep dark mark that's hard to erase. Okay, once you have your face shape, you're just gonna use the grid again to see where the lines are of your neck and shoulders, approximately. And once you have those, you can again do the neckline of where it appears on the grid and any other details. Now let's do the top of our head. And since we have our face shape here, I'm going to then do the lines that hit the face shape since I know where my face shape is. Looks like the line that hits my face shape starts about here. This is where uh, the front of my hair is. So I'm gonna look to see where it is on the grid. Looks like it's slightly to the left in that top square towards the bottom. It makes a slight diagonal line down. So I'm just using sketch lines to draw the line where I see it hits on the grid. I see it dips down below, just like that. Again, if you make a little mistake, it's okay. Best thing to do is just to keep going. You can erase and adjust later. Okay, now that I have that, those lines that hit the, my face shape, I'm gonna do the outline of my head. So the top of my head, it looks starts here. I'm gonna again draw the lines where I see them approximately on the grid as a guide. And again, using sketch lines in order to make sure that if I need to erase, it's light enough for me to erase without making a dark mark. It looks like I just have some texture lines here so I don't have to be so specific with those. Once I have the lines, how they appear on this front page, then I can get into the more complex facial feature shapes. To do the facial feature shapes, you can use the same method by trying to draw the lines of each shape um, where you see them on the grid. If this is too complicated for you, I also do have these viewfinders 
that can isolate a, a square by square so you can see what lines you see in each square. If I'm looking, the lines that seem the simplest to me to start off with are the lines of my nose. And I know this, that they hit this line on the grid. So that's easy for me to locate and draw. So I'm just gonna draw the lines of my nose where I see them on the grid. I'm also paying attention to how wide they are from each other on the grid. If I made them a little too wide, remember I can erase and adjust. Once I have that, I'm gonna to look to see the location of my nose shape. Now, noses are very strange shapes, but essentially they are just two parentheses with a little curved line in between them. Almost like these two parentheses are jumping rope. So I'm looking to see, I see the side of my nostril is a little bit down. It's almost halfway down the uh, square um, and a little bit wider than the lines of my nose that I just drew. So I'm gonna draw that curved line for the one side. I'm gonna see how wide it is from the other. Looks like it's even a little bit longer on this side. And I'm just gonna draw what I see where I see it. And you can go very slowly and use sketch lines to draw what you see. Um, any other detail lines you can draw as well. So now I have my nose, that's kind of the center of my facial shapes. Um, I can now draw my mouth, if that's easier. I'm looking to see, um, and again, if you need to isolate the square just to see uh, what you should draw within that square, you can use the viewfinder. Um, but essentially, I'm just drawing the lines how I see them, where I see them on the grid. And for mouths, uh, essentially, you just wanna make a mark of how wide it is. Normally, it's wider than your nose. Uh, typically, the middle of your mouth, the part of your lips goes down and then goes back up, creating like a horizontal line with a little bump down the middle. The top of your lips essentially are a slight diagonal, diagonal line up they slightly move, uh, bump up and down in the same area where that small bump of your bottom lip is, bottom of your lip is. And then the bottom lip is just a large kind of smile curve like that. And again, if you see that if um, you need to adjust something, for example, I made my top lip too wide, you can erase and adjust. Now everyone's face shapes are different sizes, but essentially they're kind of a similar shape. Your lips might be thicker or thinner than mine. You're just going, going to look to see how they are on the grid. Okay, now that I have my mouth, my nose, it's time for my eyes. Now your eyes seem complicated, but they're um, easy when you break it down into the basic shapes. So it looks as though the start of my eye hits right here on the grid. So I might make a line of where the side of my eye is. And then the bottom of the line looks like it ends right here below on the grid. So I'm just going to make the two dots of how wide my first eye is. Then from dot to dot, you're going to just draw a uh, rainbow curve of how you see it on the grid. Mine slightly dips down at a diagonal towards the end a little bit more. And then once you have that rainbow curve connecting the two dots, it's like an upside down rainbow curve. Starting from the side, dipping down, I'm looking to see how it goes on the grid, just like that. Okay, it should be like an almond or a football shape approximately. Once I have that, I can look to see the circle of my pupils and where it hits within those lines that I just created. I'm going to look to see where my pupil is and maybe a little highlight. And then once I have that, I'm going to also notice that line right above is my eyelid. So I can draw the line where I see it as it is on the grid. If your uh, grid has eyelashes, you can draw eyelashes. Now everyone, no matter if you are a boy or a girl, you, you do have eyelashes. So look to see if um, 
you do have eyelashes on your drawing guide and you can draw what you see. All right, so now that I have that one eye, I can do my second eye and I'm noticing my second eye is slightly above that grid line. I must have been turning my head, but I'm still going to draw the lines where I see them on the grid. So I'm going to make a little mark, just like how I did, of where one side of my eye hits, about here, and then it looks like it extends a little bit outward beyond that grid line. So again, I can do the rainbow curve. Looks like it has this little loop. Upside down rainbow curve. The circle on the inside. The pupil, the highlight. And now I'm ready for the line above that rainbow curve for my eyelid and my eyelashes. Okay, if something looks a little off, again, you can adjust the sizing of things because we did everything very lightly. Awesome. Okay, now it seems that it's time for my eyebrows. And eyebrows are just little dashed lines that go in an arch. Now, some of your eyebrows are thicker, some of yours are thinner, but essentially it's just little dashed lines, kind of diagonal dashed lines going along in an arch. If it's easier for you, you can also just draw the line of the arch first and then do the lines on top of the arch to fulfill the, eye, the eyebrow. All right, so again, I might now look to see what I have. If I notice that something looks a little off, like I have to adjust, you can use your pencil to adjust what you see on the grid. This eye is a little bit too large, so I'm just gonna adjust. Maybe my nose lines needed to be a little bit more off to the side. Just slight adjustments until I like what I see. All right, since I'm liking the basics of what I see, I can now go on to the next step and use my black marker to outline the lines. So I'm gonna go into warp speed just to show how I outline these lines. Okay, now I have it all outlined in black. My next step is I'm going to do now the uh, front part of the flap of my drawing and as you can see because I outlined everything in black you can look through your paper and it kind of shows the outlines that you've outlined in black what you can do is use those lines to draw then your face outline shape where you see it through on the paper your hair lines that you've created and again you can do it in pencil first the lines of your neck shoulders and shirt line. And then once you have those lines drawn in pencil, instead of doing the nose and the mouth, all you're going to do is from the lower side of one side of your uh, face, you're gonna start drawing the curve of your mask. Now the top of your mask is gonna go right at the top of the flap in the middle. So you can even make a little dashed line there. Draw a curved line down, hitting the side of your face on one side, and then curve line down, hitting the other side of your face on that side. Once you have that drawn, you can do the same thing and outline that now in black marker. I'm gonna go into warp speed to show you how that's done. Once you have everything outlined, the inside and the um, outside, you can use your pencil to start drawing your mask design. Um, and it's completely up to you how you want to design your mask. Um, but I would say you wanna use more shapes and colors and designs, no words. 
So you can use your pencil once you've drawn out the design of your mask. You can outline in black. And then the last step is to color everything in. When you are coloring in your face and your skin tones, you're gonna to want to test out on a scrap piece of paper what skin tones best match your color. And it might be a combination of more than one. Um, you can use, again, a scrap piece of paper to just look to see if a certain crayon color matches your skin tone or if a combination of a few do. Um, on your packet, I do have a black and white photo of your face, you can use this photo to see the different values. Value in art means the lightness and darkness of a color. So if I'm looking to see just at the values, at the light and shadow, when I'm coloring in my face, wherever it is darker, I can press down harder with my crayon. And anywhere where it is lighter, I can press lighter with my crayon to create a lighter value. If the value, if the shadow is very dark, you can even use a combination of a uh, brown or a darker skin tone color to even exaggerate that shadow so that once you have it colored in, you can see the light and shadow um, on your skin tone. Okay. Once you have the inside all colored in, where it's your face, skin tone, eye color, mouth, hair color, and a color for your shirt, you can, either you can even color in the background. Once the inside is all colored in, obviously you're going to then color in the front flap. Well friends, I hope you have fun doing this and I can't wait to see yours.